talk today about clinical auditing oversight. So really looking at how auditing is different from monitoring and some of the processes certainly that the FDA will be looking for if they come in to look at different sites, including clinical research sites, IRBs, sponsors, CROs. We'll talk about some of those, those areas as well. So we'll look at quality assurance and how it differs from quality control. So again, the auditing monitoring perspective, who is responsible for performing each task and how they work together. We'll talk about who gets audited and some of the factors and metrics for assessing when and why to audit. So why do we select certain sites or certain entities above others and how do we really kind of triage those. We'll also look at the guidelines on how the FDA trains its investigators to audit these different groups, as we just said, or to inspect these different groups. And then we'll look at some recent noncompliance trends coming from the FDA's Bioresearch Monitoring Program and their focus on sites, sponsors, and IRBs, both domestic and international, and some of the findings that they've seen. And unfortunately, they are not very different over the years, and they do not differ that much from what we see internationally, uh, not just the FDA's view, but EMA, MHRA, PMDA, Health Canada, all of those groups see some of those same issues. So we'll talk about how we can assess these things when we're going out and auditing. So what is an audit? ICH defines an audit for us as a systematic and independent examination of trial-related activities and documents. And if you note, their definition really puts the audit process as a retrospective process. So coming in after the fact, making sure things were done correctly. Our push and our focus really is to make sure that we're using audits as compliance tools. We're using them prospectively. So we can do pre-qualification audits. We can do in-process audits. And then, of course, we can do end-of-study, pre-submission, pre-inspection audits. But what I want to really focus on outside of the timing of this, as ICH defines, is really making sure that we appreciate that it is a systematic review. So we're looking at systems, and it has to be independent from your other activities. And I see this oftentimes when I go out and audit with different sponsors where there is a blurred line or folks go out and they monitor and then they come back and audit their work. These really need to be two separate processes. So quality assurance, again, um, reaching into the ICH E6 definition for good clinical practice are the planned and systematic actions. So again, we're not going to get away from that. We're looking at systems. We are doing it in a controlled fashion and we're making sure that we are independent from the processes that are generating the work. So we're looking at SOPs and protocol and guidelines and regulations and all of these things and making sure that the work product, the output from our actions are compliant. So what is monitoring? ICH again defines for us monitoring as the act of overseeing the progress of a clinical trial and making sure it is in compliance with SOPs, protocol, GCP, and regulations. So it really puts monitoring more as a, as a real-time, in-process function. But we know that we have to work together to make sure that we have compliance across all levels. Some of the things that we see when we monitor are going to be different. We're going to have a different approach when we look at the same information when we go out and audit. So as auditing with quality assurance, Monitoring is quality control. So these are those operational techniques and acti activities undertaken within the quality assurance system. So this is also an important distinction um, of which to be aware, is that when we are monitoring, we are following, following under the umbrella, if you will, of auditing. Even though we have to be separate, we know, for example, if we go to a site, we are not just going to be assessing the investigators conduct of that study, we're going to be assessing the monitor and their interaction as a sponsor representative. The quality control operates within the quality assurance system, again, to make sure that all of those requirements for quality of the trial have been fulfilled. So as we go through this, one of the things I always like to say, and you, it's just so I don't confuse you, when I talk about product in good clinical practice, I'm thinking not of your investigational product, but of our product being good data from protected subjects. So anything that we can do to build quality into that product is what we are going to be looking for when we go out and audit. 